today uh, we are continuing the reading. So if you can, you can, you please stay with us. And um, today I will be reading. And uh, as you all know, or if you, you don't know, we, we were reading uh, from the uh, sto story of about Sri Radharaman Charandas Dev. So we will start, actually, we will continue from the page 118, but I will go back to the page 117. Magana Timiranda Syag and Anjana Shalaka, Chakshura Milita Mena, Tasma, she good away in a mother. Monday, Ham, she guru, she tap at the Kamalam, she guru, Vaishnavam, she rupam sagrajatam, Sahagana, Rabinatam, Vitam, Tam, Sajivam, Sadvitam, Savadutam, Parijana, Sagitam, Krishna, Chaitanya Devam. Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Shcham Jai Dear devotees and dear Radha Dasyam family, dear Gurudev. So now we are continuing the story about Shri Radha Raman Charan Das Dev. So now I will just briefly uh, in a few uh, sentences, for those who were not here, actually, we were also not here the last week, we were traveling, but our dear um, Andaka was reading. And uh, but now, for those of you who were not here, as also we were not here, I will just read a few sentences about who was Sri Radraman Charandas Dev so that we know from this. Uh, text that, that will continue, that will follow, uh, to have this feeling that uh, we know who are we reading about. So, Sri Radharaman Charandas Dev was a prominent Vaishnava saint who lived in the 19th and early 20th centuries in Bengal, renowned for his unwavering dedication to Lord Krishna he immersed himself in devotional practices and spread the message of love and devotion to the masses. Sri Radha Raman Charandas Dev's profound spiritual experiences and profound knowledge of scriptures earned him great respect among his contemporaries, making him a revered figure in the bhakti tradition of Bengal. His life and teachings continued to inspire countless devotees even long after his passing. So, uh, we are actually reading from this place, from this point where uh, Sri Radha Raman Charandas Dev, who was during his life known uh, by many different names, um, he is now uh, taking sannyas, in Navadvip, from Siddha Sri Gaura Hari Das Babaji, a disciple of Siddha Sri Jagannath Das Babaji. Gaura Hari Das Babaji gave him the name Radha Raman Charan Das. So this is this name that he was finally known by. So one day when Babaji Mahashai was returning from Mahaprabhu's temple, performing kirtan with his party, a female dog came by and joined the procession on the way. This Sankirtan party stopped at places and sang, then proceeded with redoubled vigor, singing the Sankirtan with maddening peals. maddening moments. Every time the party stopped, this female dog would pause till the party passed by, till the party continued walking, and then she would roll and toss on the ground, just as a devotee would do to bless his soul. She went on doing this, this dog, 
and followed the party to their destination. And then she found it in her heart to stay with them at their place. So they called, the devotees called her, this dog, Bhakti Ma, Mother Devotion. For she was no ordinary dog. She was never found failing out with the rest of her species as other do, dogs do or other dogs would. So she was never associating with other dogs. She always kept company with the devotees and regularly attended the Sankirtan at home and abroad wherever it was held. Days went on and Bhaktima was taken ill. She was wasting away day by day till one day it was felt that she was going to shuffle off her mortal coil, means that she will leave her body. And uh, so the Sankirtan was held in her hearing to pour down the Lord's blessings on her departing soul. So devotees were singing Sankirtan for this dog who was about to leave its body. So she passed away with the Lord's name on her ears and her body was thrown into the sacred stream of the Ganges, a departure to be envied by saints with hopes of salvation in afterlife. The Chira Mahotsava was duly performed as usual after the departure of a devotee. On the fourth day after her, her demise, after her departure, Babaji Mahashai thought of giving an entertainment service to the Vaishnavas for blessing her soul in the lands in the land of bliss. Just imagine how merciful Babaji Mahashaya and all the devotees were towards this dog who was really a special soul, a special Vaishnava. This we can see that no matter in what body one may be, Bhakti is independent and can bless any person, anybody, anybody, no matter in what kind of species he is, she is, or it is. So now we continue from this moment where we uh, left off last week. The entertainment was accordingly held on the 14th day after her departure. Babaji Mahashai said that some of her kin must be fed to complete the ceremony in the proper way. That he said that some of her uh, dogs, you know, other dogs must be fed to complete her, the ceremony in the proper way. His attendants were struck dumb with surprise to hear this strange proposal from the lips of our Barha Babaji. For whoever heard that dogs could be formally invited to dinner and made to eat accordingly? But here was one, our old friend Navadvip Das Babaji, who had the nerve to believe in everything that fell from Babaji's lips. He st started up and said, Well then, please let me know what I must do to see it's done, to see it done. Babaji Mahashai said, Why, it is so simple. You should only prostrate yourself whenever you meet any of the dogs in the street and tell them with folded hands, we humbly solicit the favor of your company along with your friends and relatives at the dinner service to be held tomorrow in memory of our late lamented Bhakti Ma at the premises of our Gurudeva in the Barhagat quarter of the city. Wow, what a beautiful invitation to dogs. Amazing. Now, this is the usual form of invitation letters addressed to our human guests on such occasions. And we may readily guess at the incredible impropriety of this address to be delivered to dogs 
for similar purposes and the heavy responsibility of the man appointed to shoulder this mighty task. Navadvip was only too keenly conscious of the charge laid to his care, and he fell at his Babaji's feet with tears in his eyes. He felt that it was something which he could never hope to accomplish by himself, unaided by the mysterious powers on high. Babaji Mahashai slapped him on the back and let him go. So he got the blessings. Navadvip was surcharged. He staggered, reeled, and tottered from side to side as he walked. One would have taken him for a drunkard or a madcap. Madman. So he went round the city, acting up to the biddings of his master till it was nightfall. Means that he was going from one dog to another and falling on the ground and giving invitations to this ceremony. When he returned back to his lodging, so he, was, he went around the city acting up to the order of his master till it was nightfall when he returned back to his place, his lodging. Next morning, preparations were going on for the proposed entertainment and Vaishnavas were invited, summoned, to join the festival. News arrived that some of the leading Vaishnavas thought that their prestige would be at stake if they would go and join a festival where dogs were some of the invited guests. Hmm. Barha Babaji went personally to the Barha Arka Akra to settle the affair, but, no, but to no purpose. Some of them were in inexorable. But the festival was held in spite of their stout resistance. So you can see some devotees were resisting. They didn't want to come. They thought, oh, if the dogs are invited, we cannot be there. It will ruin our uh, reputation, dignity, etc. But, and a thousand others came to witness the strange performance. Some of these guests had a shrewd suspicion that it would end in a farce after all. They, will, they were thinking, some of the guests were thinking that it will end as a joke, like a nonsense thing. For evidently, it was something impossible, which could never be brought about. Others had great confidence in the Babaji, and uh, though he could make impossible possible when he had a mind to do it. Then came Radishyam Baba. All stood up and prostrated themselves before this worshipful personage. He was affectionately disposed towards Babaji Mahashai. He began to take him to task for setting his hands to a task which could, not on, um, which could not on the face of it be accomplished. He also uh, urged that he would be sorely aggrieved if the proposed entertainment of dogs would prove a failure, for he could not brook to hear Babaji Mahashai belittled by anybody. So that means he was so happy that this is going to be performed and he would not bear to hear that Babaji Mahashai belittled any, was belittled by anybody. Although our Babaji himself might not take it to heart and laugh it away. Babaji Mahashai argued that God was omnipresent present in dogs as well as in men. And so appeals made to God in the dogs must necessarily have the same effect as those made to God inherent in men. Just see how he had this 
really transcendental vision, spiritual vision. He saw God present in each and everyone's heart. So he respected everyone regardless of what kind of body they had. He prayed them to remember that God came out of a pillar and manifested himself as Rishinga when Prahlad appealed to him to show himself to his demon father, Hiranyakashipu. He said that it was their want of faith in the Lord that made them suspect the practicability of the whole thing. The day wore on and the assembly were just hopping, just coming, you know, hopping to see their skeptical prophecies fulfilled. So many people were skeptical. And they just came to check that nothing is going to happen. When, behold, the dogs actually began to appear one by one. Barha Babaji Mahashai saw this. He started he jumped up to his feet at once. He prostrated himself before his canine guests, before his dog guests, and duly received them as he showed them to their seats on the royal road at the Barhal Ghat. There was great sensation among the people, and they gazed on one another in dumb surprise. The news spread and thousand others came to witness the strange performance. Oh, wonder, is it possible that the dogs would accept human invitations and come as guests in response to our human appeals? Maybe they are come, only in expectation of the bits and crumbs thrown away on such occasions. But no, not one, two or four of them for the matter. Of that, they came, they come in crowds. Some 50 to 60 of them have already appeared on the scene. And what was more wonderful, dogs would quarrel, we know. They would fly at each other's face whenever two dogs would meet. But no, these dogs came and sat down quietly side by side, as we men should do in our entertainment halls. It was something phenomenal, indeed, and men stood on both sides of the public road to notice the strange proceedings of the unheard-of affair. Babaji Mahashai was transported beyond measure to find that his God sent his grace to show to the skeptical multitude, many people, what true faith could do even at the present age in the teeth of the gigantic disbelief so foolishly entertained in the spirit and spiritual truths. His eyes reddened with emotion as he threw the skirts of his clothes round his neck and humbly besieged his god in the dogs to issue orders for the dinner to be served. At this, all the dogs looked up to him at once. And he knew what they said, after which he instructed his men to supply his quests with the plant, plantain leaves, that means banana leaves, and serve them up with all the items of the entertainment rolled into a mass for their acceptance. So actually, uh, devotees mixed all the uh, prashad on these banana leaves and rolled them up so the god dogs could eat them. So it was done. His biddings performed. The dogs were sever severally served with boluses on their leaf plates on the royal road. Now, look here, wonder again. Dogs with edible matter before them, and they would not touch, they would not partake of food supplied to them. All the leaves were served one by one, and they sat upright, just like people. Then Babaji Mahashai spoke in a broken voice, and with tears in his eyes, requested them to begin. 
At this time, a black dog came and sniffed at the leaves, after which the dogs fell to their leaves. They started eating. Cries of Hari, Hari, and <laughs> were heard on all sides around, and they verily seemed to rend the skies above. It was a scene of scenes enacted before the wandering multitude, and their exclamations and roars of applause echoed and re-echoed in all quarters of the city. The service ended. The dogs turned away from the leaves. Then an earthen pot filled with water was offered to each of them. They drank the pots and sat still. Bits were taken as Mahaprasad from their leaves and water in a pot as a wash from their feet, for they were Vaishnavas indeed, and no ordinary dogs, nay. They were God himself invoked and incarnated by the power of the mighty faith in the omnipresence of God. Babaji Mahashai again folded his hands and prostrated himself before them, asking them if they were satisfied and requesting them to pardon any shortcomings on the part of his attendants and retire to their own places at their own sweet will. The dog Vaishnavas then left the scene one by one as they came. Babaji Mahashai, in a paroxysm of transcendental joy, rolled and tossed on the blessed leaves from one side to another again and again. The man scrambled for a morsel of the Mahaprasad, and our Radeshyam Baba embraced Babaji Mahashai heartily as he blessed his darling with tearful eyes before he took leave to repair to his lodging, lodgings. <clears throat> Babaji Mahashai gathered the Mahaprasad all in a lump, offered it to the departed spirit of Bhakti Ma, and then partook of it in high glee, in great bliss along with his attendants in the ashram. Wow. It was about 10 o'clock in the night when it was perceived that the plateful of prasad was lying unnoticed. Babaji Maharshai asked his men to keep it intact for it struck him one, uh, for it struck him that one of his guests was yet to come and it was to be set apart for him. After a part, uh, after a while, uh, after a while, Babaji Maharshai was coming out of his bedchamber when he found a red dog lying at the door of his room. The dog saw him and got up at once and cast significant glances as it looked up to him. He called Chaitanya, his mate, in charge of Prasad and asked him to serve Prasad up to the guest at once. Chaitanya acted up to it. Navadvip Das, now coming up and looking at the newcomer, exclaimed that verily it was the same dog he met first of all, and the same whom he requested to convey the message to each and every one of the kinsfolk of the other dogs and bring them all to the scene of occurrence. So this means this dog who was invited at first, he came the last. So this whole prashad that was left was actually meant for him. So now they all saw why this particular guest was late, for he had to go about and send them up before he himself could come to take his share of the entertainment. One day, Barha Baba Maharshai went with his party to Krishna Nagar. Actually, now just to uh, finish this part of the story with the dogs, this is so amazing. You, we can all see how great and deep faith Babaji Maharshai and his 
uh, companions, his friends and followers had in his words also, that he was able to see a divine and uh, the divine identity of each and every soul and each and every person, regardless of whether they were in dog's body or human body. And we see how um, when, when this vision is there, even the dogs start, those in dog bodies start uh, behaving in a totally special way. And this is what true Vaishnava association means, because this great Vaishnava believed that they are also Vaishnavas. In some way, he blessed them, and they all awakened their natural devotion and behaved like Vaishnavas and became Vaishnavas. So now we continue with this second little story within the story. One day, Barha Baba Mahashai, that's the other name of uh, Radharaman Charandas Dev, so one day Barha Baba Mahashai went with his party to Krishna Nagar and stayed in the garden of Sri Kanta Babu. <clears throat> At four o'clock in the afternoon, he set out with his party dancing and singing the name of the Lord as usual. Soon they reached near the college of Krishna Nagar. The college had just closed. The college had just closed. The teachers and the students were coming out of the college premises. The melody of the Sankirtan rang in their ears. As they turned in that direction, they saw a tall and impressive looking Babaji and his party dancing and singing in ecstasy. Tears incessantly streamed out of the eyes of the tall Babaji. His hair stood on end, and he trembled like one caught in a blast of emotion, which it was difficult to control. He was singing and inviting others to sing. He sang, sing, 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 O oh, sing the Lord's name. They are but one, the Lord and the name. The Lord's name is sweet, so sweet. I pray, I bow down at your feet. Sing, O oh, sing the Lord's name. The name will bless you with Krishna praying. Wow, such a beautiful song. Adhara Babu, the professor of the college, and Vrajalala Babu, the teacher of the collegiate school, found the invitation irresistible. They joined the Sankirtan party and began to sing and dance with them. The students also felt forcibly drawn and began to sing and dance. The call was also heard by the shopkeepers who came down from their shops to join the Sankirtan and the passer passers-by, the woodcutter with a load of wood over his head, and the washerman with his load of clothes, all came and joined to create a gala of Sankirtan, such as the people of Krishna Nagar had never seen before. Babaji Maharshai was so lost in ecstatic joy and emotion that he occasionally felt like losing outer consciousness and failing senseless on the ground. But he controlled himself by shouting, Nitai, Nitai. His shouts seemed to render the sky. Others also caught his emotion and were so transported that they sang and danced like those who had drunk deep of the cup of divine drink. The procession marched on and on. As it marched 
its wealth in numbers. It became bigger and bigger. Slowly, night came, and Babaji Maharshi stopped Sankirtan and returned to the garden. Days rolled on like this. Every day, Sankirtan procession went round Krishna Nagar, and every day people were carried away by the flow tide of spiritual frenzy generated by the Sankirtan into a land of transcendental bliss. They had never known or experienced before. One day, as the procession was marching through a new route, Bhuvana Mohana, a devotee, was saying to his friends, Everybody in Krishna Nagar now regards Barha Babaji as truly Barha Babaji, a great Babaji, or a Mahapurusha. Here he is coming, singing and dancing in Sankirtan. If he leads the Sankirtan into my house, I would know that he is really a Mahapurusha. As he said this, he saw that the Sankirtan procession has taken a new turn and was entering the lane in which Bhuvana Mohana Babu's house was situated. Bhuvana Mohana came fo forward and bowed down to the procession. Babaji Maharshi clasped, clasped him in his arms and entered his house singing and dancing. In the middle of the courtyard of the house, there was a tulasi plant on a raised platform. Babaji Maharshi and his party started going round and round the plant, dancing and singing. Crowds of other people entered the house and joined them. At this time, Bhuvana Mohana Babu brought some batasha in a shala patra. This means a dry sweet made from sugar in a leaf of a timber plant. Interesting. So it was a kind of a prashad sweet and gave it to Babaji Mahashai for harilut. Harilut is a scattering of sweets, etc., in honor of Hari, in order that people may pick them up and eat. So he was giving this sweet prashad for, to Babaji Maharshi so he can throw it to devotees. Baba took the shalapatra in his hand and began to sing the song usually sung at the time of Harilut. Baba held the shalapatra plate in his left hand and he was dancing with his right hand lifted upwards as he sang. All others were dancing and singing with him. He occasionally scattered batashas, these sweets, with his right hand and sh shouted, Haribo! People fell upon the batashas, collected them and ate them. There were many people standing outside because the courtyard was packed to every inch. They were sorry that they could not participate in the Harilut. So it was so many people there, so not everybody could uh, take those sweets. For their sake, Baba came out and began to scatter batashas all around. The loot, accompanied by dance and kirtan, went on for an hour, during which everybody was transported into ecstasy. But the people were surprised to see that although Babaji Maharshi was freely and repeatedly throwing a handful of batashas, the shalapatra plate in his hand always remained full up to the brim. Suddenly, Baba became aware of this and threw away the plate for fear of fame. The next morning, Babaji Maharshi was invited at the house of Jogesha Babu, the local sub-registrar, to take prashad in the noon 
and perform Sankirtan in the afternoon. In the afternoon, many people started coming to the house of Jogesha Babu. Sankirtan began at about 4 p.m. Babaji Maharshi was dancing and singing, describing the Sankirtan scene of Lord Goranga dancing in ecstasy in the midst of his devotees. He was stressing the point that the name of the Lord was the only means and Nityananda the only guide to that beautific realization, this beautiful realization. When suddenly he cried, Lo, there is Nitai entranced. Behold, men high and low caught in his loving hold. He said this and was lost to the world. Tears streamed forth, hair stood on end, and trembling like a plant caught in a blast, he fell in a trance upon the ground. His followers surrounded him and sang the name of the Lord, till at last he regained consciousness and crowed in a husky voice. Bajanitai Gora Pabera Desham Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. All others repeated in the same strain, and so on till it was about ten o'clock in the night, when the party divided itself as a dual throng singing the kirtan by halves, one group singing Bajanitai Gora Pabera Desham, the other singing. Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram, and whining with each other at the top of their voices in a celestial combat. But where was our Babaji Mahashai gone? Lo, there he stood, leaning against the wall with eyes half closed and a radiant smile upon his face, bathed in tears swinging from side to side in a transport of delight and raising the forefinger of his right hand as if pointing out something on high nearby. Delicious scents, delicious fragrance came floating in the air and they knew not from where and supernatural, they didn't know where was this beautiful fragrance coming from. And supernatural joys were felt by those who took part in this Sankirtan. It was about midnight when the Sankirtan was brought to a close and the devotees came up to the spot where our Babaji stood to bow down to him and take the dust of his feet. There they found, to their amazement, a pair of footprints clearly stamped upon the marble slab on the floor and the pool of water formed of tears and sweat collected in the depression marked on the slab. This circumstance naturally created a sensation among the people of the neighborhood and they came in crowds to ascertain the truth and pay obeisances, pay homage to the saint. Maybe you remember, or if you know, maybe you know that similar thing happened when Goranga Mahaprabhu was, uh, I forgot in which place is this, I think it's in near Jagannath Puri or in Jagannath Puri. If someone of you know the exact place, you might say. I just remember that there is this one place where Goranga was standing and the rock, the, the marble, literally melted uh, uh, beneath his feet as he was in this spiritual ecstasy. Even today, you, we can see and you can find this, this stone that is completely melted uh, and has these holes in it with the marks of Goranga's body. So in similar way, 
the marble beneath Babaji Maharshaya's feet melted out of bliss due to this high ecstasy that, that Babaji Maharshaya could feel during this kirtan. Babaji Maharshaya, of course, tried to make light to, of the affair. He wanted to make it not so important. But Devendra Babu came and said, Dada, it is true, the footprints are there. I have seen them with my own eyes. Babaji replied, maybe, I don't know. But this must be due to the Leela of Nitai or the Shakti of the name. It is not fair to attribute it to any particular person. We see how Baba was so humble. And he really didn't want to uh, make others uh, pay attention to him, to, to drive attention to himself. Babaji Maharshai, who by nature shunned name and fame, rejected name and fame, now began to think of leaving Krishna Naga. The next morning, he started with his companions, dancing and singing. Bhajanitai Gora Radhe Shyam, Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. When Babaji Maharshai reached Diknagar, he heard men complaining about an unhappy event which had recently occurred in the locality. So some unhappy event happened in this place where they came. There was an old banyan tree and some Mohammedans, some Muslims, had taken it into their head to chop off some of its branches for some reason or another. The Hindus regarded the tree as sacred and they were sorely aggrieved at the unsympathetic attitude of the Muslim brethren, Muslim brothers. Next morning, Babaji Maharshai set out with his train, as was his wont, dancing and singing the name of the Lord. The, the villagers came in in crowds and joined them on the way, and he led them straight to the banyan tree. There he marked the mischief that was done, passed round and round, and prostrated himself before the tree, and then marched assigning to the Mohammedan quarter, going to the Mohammedan quarter of the town. He went his way, as if perfectly familiar with the lanes and by-lanes of the entire neighborhood. Just to Remind you, he was the first time there, so he couldn't possibly know this area. Um, and they soon found themselves in the residence of Aradana Mandala, a Mohammedan gentleman who enjoyed local reputation and had considerable influence over the Muslims of the place. The villagers, of course, feared a row, and they thought of desisting the Sankirtan party from venturing into the quarter. So the villagers, of course, they were in fear from this um, Mohammedan gentleman, and they thought to prevent the Sankirtan party from going into this, into his place. But they could not do anything. They were there in the courtyard of Aradana Mandala. And when he appeared, the band of singers, like trained soldiers, surrounded him on all sides and went on singing and dancing, oblivious of the world and anything else besides. Suddenly, Babaji Maharshai addressed himself to Haradana and roared, Say! Nitai Gora Radhe Shyam. Haradana replied, Say, Nitai Gora Radhe Shyam. Babaji said again, Say, Hare Krishna Hare Ram. Haradana again repeated, Say, Hare Krishna Hare Ram. And so on for some 15 minutes. 
Sadadana, repeating what Babaji suggested till tears stream down the cheeks and the flowing beard of Mandala Sahib. Uh, and he began to dance hands with the rosary japa of pebbles raised on high and wooden sandals under his feet. And when Babaji Maharshi came forward and clasped him to his chest, he was overpowered with joy and came down reeling to the ground beneath. The Sankirtan closed round and Babaji breathed into his ears and he trembled and rolled on the ground and then blanched with dust. He began to dance with renewed vigor in the midst of Sankirtan. Off went his sandals. He knew not where the rosary, rosary slipped between his fingers. He did not perceive. He fixed his eyes on the Babaji, muttered in broken accents, and went on with his dance. And when our Babaji left the scene and made for the banyan tree, he made one of the party and followed him, hardly knowing what he was doing and where he was going and why. Now, this is hypnotism, one would say. Maybe, but our Babaji was not a trained hypnotist. For what we know, we don't know. The fact is that these powers come without any seeking. Yes, they come to the man of love. The power of raising any man and every man to the kingdom of heavenly bliss where all these petty dissensions are lulled into the harmony and repose of love and joy. So, these powers come without any searching, any seeking. These powers come naturally to a person who is full of love, and in this heavenly bliss of love, all these uh, differences, disharmonies, and misunderstandings are completely changed to good and changed to harmony and love and joy. So, so they came back to the banyan tree and went dancing and singing round and round the tree. When, lo, what is this? The very branches of the tree seemed to dance in tune with the Sankirtan beneath. Can this be true? They could scarcely believe their eyes. They cleared their eyes and looked again, but only to see what they saw before. The branches were indeed dancing. The branches just above the Sankirtan below. At first they thought there might have been some birds flapping their wings and moving the branches. But they had soon to give up this idea, for they noticed with surprise that the branches danced only where the Sankirtan was going on, and that other branches danced while the former one was... Uh, the other branches danced while the former one stopped as the Sankirtan moved round and round. Just imagine this. Rumor flew apace, and men and women came in crowds to witness the strange performance. The Sankirtan continued till 11 o'clock in the morning, after which, when Babaji Maharshi was about to retire, our friend Haradana requested him with tears in his eyes to be permitted to stay with him. Our Babaji consoled him, saying that he need not fear. Haradana, remember the Muslim uh, gentleman. Our Babaji consoled him, saying that he need not fear, for the grace of God was upon him. Only he should see 
that the tree might not be defiled again in time to come. He gave the banyan the name of the wish tree, Kalpa Riksha, you know. In, uh, banyan tree is actually considered to be the wish fulfilling tree. And said that whoever would offer milk, Ganges water, and chiraga, that means a lamp made of a small earthen pot with oil and wicks. That means like a deep uh, In the evening, at the feet of the tree, should have the fulfillment of his desires. Haradana pledged himself and his family to the sacred vow, whereupon our Babaji embraced him heartily and bidding him goodbye, returned with his Sankirtan back to his lodgings. But things like this cannot be readily swallowed by men of the present age. And there came censors and the connoisseurs, the educated and scientifically inclined men of the neighborhood who still doubted the testimony of the eyewitnesses on the scene. They had their honest doubts, and it was well that it was so for these honest honest doubts, quote unquote, act as the cement of conviction when carefully experiment, when careful experiment removes these doubts and reveals the truth. Um, it was not long before Babaji Maharshi heard all this and he wished to show them that truth like gold shines brighter when put to the proof. Just to remind you, uh, I see that it's already 3.33, but I thought of just finishing this one uh, part of the story just to, so that we can have this whole story finished today. So uh, next time we can start with a completely new story. So. Bear with me. Um, I think it's just maybe one or two pages more. If you can listen, it will be great. So I will continue. So we can see that after this uh, interesting and amazing, unusual uh, occurrence where the tree was dancing literally with the Sankirtan party, some people, some scientifically inclined people were still skeptical. And they had, they needed to check this to prove it, or maybe they were also against it. It was not long before Babaji Maharshi heard all this, and he wished to show them the truth like gold shines brighter. When put to the proof, personal aspersions, he would never mind. We have already seen so much of him in the earlier pages. But when any of the verities was called in questions, he would at once take up the challenge and prove it to the hilt that such doubts only arise out of the ignorance of the higher laws that work in spite of the arrogant and adverse alleviations of the short-sighted coxcombs. Very interesting uh, English words that we might, might not understand them all. I try to interpret, interpret them as much as I can. Um, so... Babaji Maharshi wanted to prove that in spite of the arrogant alleviations and um, alleviations uh, like convictions of the short-sighted, those who don't see, um, and bigoted scientists, 
He wanted to show them that there is this higher truth. Said the Babaji in solemn accents, I say, gentlemen, the name of the Lord is omnipotent. It is such a trifling thing to be accomplished by his name, the dancing of the tree. Come and see. If you still have doubts, join the Sankirtan, and you shall have ample opportunity of verifying the truth once again. Next morning, Babaji Maharshai set out with his Sankirtan party, and those who were skeptically inclined accompanied him to the scene of the occurrence. It was about half past nine in the morning when they reached the banyan, and the men found to their astonishment that the tree danced again as the Lord's name was sung beneath the branches. They saw it, and yet they would not believe. Wow! They saw it, and yet they would not believe. One of them stepped forward and asked the Babaji if he had any objections to somebody climbing the tree for ascertaining to making sure of the truth. He said he had none, provided no non-Brahmin should undertake the task. Two Brahmin boys were accordingly summoned to get up on the tree with instructions to ransack the branches and see if there was any bird or monkey or any other animal that might have been swinging the branches that seemed to dance to the tune of the Sankirtan. But they could find nothing, and so it was finally established beyond the shadow of a doubt and universally accepted as truth, this dancing of the branches of the tree. They naturally attributed it to the power of the saint, more so when they looked at our Muslim friend Haradana Mandala, the leader of the Mohammedans, regarded with fear by their Hindu neighbors, this Mandala who had come again and was singing with tearful eyes along with the others in the Sankirtan party. The same thing was repeated for several, seven consecutive days. And the branches danced whenever the Babaji sang with his party under the banyan tree. Jai Shri Radhi. So, we came to the end of this one little story within the bigger story about uh, Shri Radha Raman Charandas Dev. As you could see, or you can already see, this is a very long uh, biography or actually description of the life of Shiradaraman uh, Charandas Dev. So we will have material for reading left for the next week also. But next week we are continuing continuing with another different story from his life. Thank you so much for being here and listening. I hope you all enjoyed it and you were inspired as i was also very much inspired and we are all thankful for our to our gurudev so he could uh, allow us to read this and gave us this beautiful idea and blessing to be able to read about from the lives of these saints because probably you have already felt that by reading about these beautiful and great saints, we have the ability and get the opportunity and blessing to be there, to associate with them as if we were there personally. And just imagine when you're there personally with such beautiful, great saints, you all and we all get blessed by their mercy, by their presence. So by reading all of these stories and being here and hearing all of these beautiful leelas and stories, we all get showers of mercy. And uh, this is so great. So it's like a, an ocean of mercy of the association of great souls, great Mahashayas, great saints. And uh, I 
beg you and I ask you to please open your hearts and open your ears and be here because this is like an unparalleled uh, ocean of mercy that's coming from these lives of these great personalities. Thank you very much. Dade, dade.